Hello, my name is Paul Wilson, and I'm here with my colleague Debbie Clement. We are the engineers in control. This is the 11th talk in our series, Control Systems 101. In talk number 11, we are going to use a method of combining transfer functions in series and apply it to a real-life process. This process is the motor and pump set that we first met in talk number 4. You may remember we combined the dynamics of the motor, the pump and the fluid flow in the pipe. So here is the picture I showed in talk number 4 of a thickener underflow pump with the water and pipe work. The underflow is a thickened slurry of very fine ore particles in water containing a proportion of the metal being mined. So the specific gravity is higher than water, it's around 1.4 to 1.5, say. As we saw, we have a motor with inductance as a reactive component. And we also have the inertia of the armature uh, also as a reactive component. Now it's coupled by a chain drive usually to a pump. Here's the pump. Now the pump also has inertia. Uh, and that's a reactive component. But we have fluid in the pipework, and the fluid has inertia too, so that's a reactive component. So we have effectively four reactive components. Inductance, inertia in the motor, inertia in the pump, and inertia in the fluid flow. We also have passive components, so we have the friction in the bearings of the motor, we have the friction in the bearings of the pump, and we have friction in the fluid flow through the pipe. So we're going to avoid the nuisance of differential equations and we're going to go directly to transfer functions. And we know from heavy size substitution that transfer functions and differential equations are essentially the same thing. So we will behave like control systems engineers, not mathematicians, and work directly in transfer functions. As we already know, to combine transfer functions in series, we multiply all of the numerators together on the top line. We also multiply all of the denominators together on the bottom line. As you can see, there appears to be an anomaly. We have four gains in the numerator, but only three terms of complex frequency s in the denominator. How did that happen? How did we arrive at this? Recall that we noticed that the motor armature is tightly coupled to the pump rotor and so they behave as a single component which we can call the pump set. I have labelled it through this exercise by the subscript PS, PS for pump set. So that is the pump set there. When we have a single transfer function, the numerator and the denominator represent two entirely different aspects. In this case, the numerator is the simple conversion of the input to the output by a simple gain function. It can also contain functions of s, and then we call it the output equation. We will deal with that several talks on, but for now it is just the system gain. The denominator is the equation that defines the system dynamics. This is the way the process behaves. In a future talk, we will call this the characteristic equation or characteristic polynomial. But for now, just think of it as the system dynamics. Now let us look at the numerator. In fact, it is simply A multiplied by B multiplied by C multiplied by D. At A times B is just the gain of the motor. The input is in volts and the output is in revs per minute. C is the gain of the pump and converts revs per minute into cubic metres per hour of flow 
which is the standard usually used in process plants. And gain D has the same input as the output in cubic metres per hour, and so the gain of D is just 1. Now let us turn to the denominator. As I said, this defines the dynamic behaviour of the system, the characteristic behaviour. Firstly, the motor windings have inductance L and resistance R. This gives us the LS plus R term for the motor windings. Secondly, the motor rotor has inertia J and friction F. But the motor shaft is directly coupled to the pump shaft and so the motor and the pump act together and we have the pump inertia and the friction also. So we can combine the motor and the pump dynamics together because they are so tightly coupled and this gives us uh, Jm plus Jp for the inertia and uh, the friction Fm plus Fp for the friction of the combined set so that the total pump set inertia J is Jm plus Jp and the total pump set friction F is Fm plus Fp. Finally we have the inertia and friction of the fluid that is being pumped. Now the fluid is not directly coupled to the pump and so behaves independently. So we have a JS plus F of the fluid as well. So now bringing it all together into a single transfer function, we end up with this. The total system gain K converts motor voltage into the fluid flow rate in cubic meters per hour. The system dynamic behaviour through the characteristic polynomial is a third order polynomial in S as shown. That is the end of talk number 11 and our first practical demonstration of transfer functions in action. So we hope you learnt something from this talk and I hope you join us again for talk number 12. In talk number 12 we are going to take the motor and pump set and add a flow control feedback loop. Thank you for listening and we hope you will join us for talk number 12. The engineers in control are Dr Paul Wilson and David Clement. You can find out more about us at www.engineersincontrol.com Unless explicitly stated, all content in this video is original and is copyright 2022 by Dr. Paul Wilson and David Clement. All rights reserved.